Oh well. Here we go. Welcome to Little Green Men. So, assuming my computer doesn't melt into a pile of plastic goo. I already got mystery goo containers. I don't need more. Today we are going to continue our mission to put Starbase 1 in orbit of Iota. After that, I can do some shenanigan missions with that space station while preparing for the crewed mission to Thalia. Whoa, laggy. Alright, let's bring up the save game. Just so anyone watching this in the past, present, or future knows, if you want to ask me a question, I have the same name, maxl underscore 1023, on the KSB forum. And you can also leave comments either here on Twitch or uh, on my YouTube channel. Now, I'm pretty sure my YouTube channel isn't that active, so if you put something there, chances are I'll notice it at some point and be able to respond to you. Assuming, of course, you think I have something you would want to know. Whether or not that is the case, well, <laughs> it's up to you. I can help you get into orbit anyway. At least I can do that without blowing something up most of the time. Except for that time yesterday when my launch clamps somehow wouldn't let my rocket go due to some kind of weird... I don't know what was going on with that, actually. It's like they're magnetic or something. Oh well. So... Let's bring up the tracking station and see what we got going. Because I'm fairly sure I got some cryogenic fuel aboard my... Uh, space station, at least on the booster stage, and I don't want to get rid of that for now. Alright, I still have a bunch of shit in orbit, but for now, actually, I don't want to see just probes. I just want to know where my relays are and where my ships are. So, let's bring up Starbase 1. So this is basically a top-level science lab mixed with a uh, habitation module, propulsion module, power generation, RCS, and a bunch of docking ports. So essentially it's a core for a space station. Depending on how heavy the gravity of IOTA is and whether or not it's worth it, I might eventually try and set up a mining base there for refueling, just for shits and giggles. Although I'm not 100% sure if that would be the best place to put one, just because of the Delta V requirements. Now, ideally, I'd want to put an asteroid in low-gale orbit, but the problem is is that the asteroids in this game are a minimum 15,000 tons, so I'm going to need some much more advanced technology before I can try relocating one of those. So, let's bring ourselves to Iota. And nice, I can get directly there, because notice that while my orbit is slightly inclined relative to IOTA's, IOTA's in such a position that if I launch on a Hoffman transfer, my ascending node is roughly where I'll hit IOTA. Notice it goes in this line. So basically what that means is that I'll be passing through the plane of IOTA's orbit while passing through IOTA's orbit while IOTA will be there. So I'll end up encountering the moon. So now, this is just the remnants of the stage that pushed me into orbit. I got 700 meters per second of delta-v left on it, so I might as well use it. The 5000 here is the propulsion module for the space station, so that has to be enough to finish up my iota transfer burn, and then it has to be enough to uh, get me into orbit of iota, do any maneuvering I need, and then have enough for orbital maneuvers in the future. My goal is to be able to refuel it, and then once I refuel this thing, what'll end up happening is then I can move it to SETI or even to another planet. 5,000 meters per second of Delta V will be enough to get from IOTA, probably even the Tulumo or uh, Neven. Neven, probably. I might have to dock, actually, extra fuel tanks to the station, which would be kind of funny, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. All right, now let's warp to our maneuver. Right now, I'm just letting the MechJeb autopilot handle this because this is just an ejection burned iota. I did this a thousand times before I even have MechJeb technology, so it's not really. It's 
something that's worth looking at. Hmm, this says atmospheric carbonite. So I could probably put a mining vessel just on the surface somewhere and suck fuel out of the air. I don't know where they came up with this, but I'm going to start the scanners now. Just so that I don't for I have them running. I don't think any of these science instruments has new science I can use. Unless it lets me put stuff in the lab twice. Oh, maybe it does. I'm just going to start all the scanning stuff I have. Because I might as well use the things. And I'm going to burn out of this stage in a minute. Alright, let's detach that stage and let's ignite the propulsion module. And that did not sound good. Okay, no, it was just the... When I ignite the engines, it blows up the fuel tanks. That's actually funny on so many levels. Although there's not really much I can do about that. Oh, this one can't do a crew report. Should be able to get it up here, though. Yes. Alright, so that's all the in-space low data. Now next will be the in-space high stuff. So the in-space high will basically let me do important stuff. Hmm, <laughs> slash it'll be more data and more science. Yep, I'll start that one too. And I don't think I brought a radar scanner on this, because I've already scanned IOTA and said I, I believe. <sighs> Alright, this is going to take a while. Let's warp through this burn. This is a Space Y Penguin engine, by the way. It's basically a 3.75 meter version of the Poodle. Slightly more efficient, but... In general, it's not too bad. Then I need, I need to do something at ETA as well while we're at it. And I need to go back to Thalia and do an ore st just, Yikes, I need to do everything everywhere. One planet at a time, thank you very much. Oh, at least we get a nice view of Gale. Now, I don't think there's anything in the service bay that's important. No, it's just one of my probe cords on a monoprop tank. Hmm. I'm going to go into a 400 kilometer orbit. Then there will be my correction burn. 20 meters per second should be deal reasonable.
Yeah, so the key to this is just I want this is Iota here. I want to pass close enough to it that I can enter a polar orbit and uh, essentially be within range for the Taurus contract to trigger. Well, I'm halfway out diode anyway. Now it's almost time for the correction burn. I'll just ex I'll just uh, extend these photovoltaics because pretty much as soon as I get this thing set in orbit, I'm going to send back my turrets because they really don't want to spend too much time. Okay, well that lab analysis is done. Now where's my other science equipment? RPWS, materials bay, I'll need to reset that in a minute. Pressure data, goo. Oh, I never did put that in there. I already got gravioli, let's see if I got a biome change. No, I did not get a biome change. All right, orbital telescope, whatever the heck this thing is, magnetometer, Goresat, which is the infrared radiometer in realism overhaul, crew report, and now where is Bob Kerman? Please be on the same side as the science equipment. Nope, he is on the other side. Well, I got four scientists here, so... Let's see if... What? Do I really only have two scientists on this thing? Theoretically, there should be four. No? Oh, okay, I see what's wrong. Two of them are passenger seats, so I can't actually EVA them. And they both EVA over here. Well, I don't know why you have two doors if one, both Kerbals legs it at the same one. I'm sure that violates some- wait a minute, never mind, the Kerbals don't have a fire code. What are you talking about? They probably sit around dancing when one breaks out at the VAB. Jebediah probably frickin' brings a bunch of marshmallows. Alright, well, that's fixed anyway. Now, let me check my encounter. Yeah, 387 kilometers. That's good. And I'm almost on a free return trajectory. Well, not really a free return trajectory, but... I'm not actually too far off. Alright. Almost there. Alright, we are now within Iota's sphere of influence. I want a polar orbit. But before I do that, let me disconnect my uh, return vessel. Because this I do not want this one to be in a polar orbit. And 
and I want this one to be a little bit higher too. See you, tourists. I also get a lot more fuel when it's just this space station. And I got this giant docking port on the ass end of her, so... If I have to do something... You're telling me I forgot to put an antenna on this thing? Shit. Oh well, this thing has room for how much science? 10,000. So that won't be a problem. I'll just have to dock it with something that does have an antenna at some point in the distant future. Well, we can work around that. 1,000 kilometer orbit. Let's go. Alright, now which one of these is going to reach Parapsis first? This one will reach it in 8 hours and 13 minutes. And now let's check this vessel. hours and 10 minutes. Let me check something. Wrong way. Unless... How much Delta V will that cost? Oh, not much. Yeah, if I'm going to burn this onto a different trajectory so that I can get back to Gale faster. That's the strategy, right? I'll just change from a prograde to a retrograde encounter. activate the engine that might help a lot the trusty terrier probably one of the most used engines in the game once you're outside of the atmosphere Good, now where's my other ship? Now I just need to circularize this. And while I'm doing that, my other vessel can just fly on on its flyby past Iota.
Da, 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 da. All this data. get this one? No. Alright, let's circularize at the next parapsis. That shouldn't take too much delta V. No, it won't take much delta V at all. Only a couple hundred meters per second. I'm not too worried about the communications because I can just uh, dock anything to this that has an antenna. This whole thing here is actually a senior docking port. My other ship is passing along that way, I think. Too far away to see, obviously. Let's bring up Mr. ScanSat. Yeah, so I have radar. Oh, and I got most of the biome scan, too, but I this is the first time I'm doing a high res, so... When you combine that with the resource scans, it makes sense. How much data does this have anyway? Oh, enough for 1500 science, nice. Why does this thing have no roll control? Huh, I can't control anything except for the SAS functions. Oh well, that's fine. Now, this thing is now safely in orbit and it can scan away to its heart's content. Now, where is my other vessel? You're telling me this doesn't count? <sighs> Friggin' garbage. Good thing I got a lot of gas left. Apparently that shit doesn't count when I'm not... Of course, now it counts.
I'm gonna execute this one manually because I'm a boss. I'll just warp to next maneuver. What the heck? What? I don't even get this. How the hell did I did a shroud just nah? Oh well. <sighs> this is our maneuver node. We're canceling our our orbital velocity by accelerating at iota parapsis. There we go. The Taurus are returning home to Gale. Yep, let's I'm gonna quick save it and I, I'm gonna try a full speed reentry. And we're probably just passing right by the freaking Kerbal Space Program too. Well, we're probably a little bit south of it, but I think this is the continent it's on. Yeah, I think that might be it up there. Oh well. Only 10,000 meters a second, that's not too bad. It's not quite as fast as a lunar return in real solar system because Gale is very slightly smaller than Earth. It's of only 6,000 kilometers in diameter, so it doesn't quite have as much mass. Although I do believe it has a higher density. All right. Whoa, I did not sound good. Hopefully the ablator holds up. I wish this thing could do lifting re-entries. Well, this is a lifting re-entry here, but it's not really doing anything. Yeah, the Taurus passed out, but... Oh, Jeb's gone too, shit. I wish this thing had the offset center of mass functionality that the other pods do. <laughs> but this thing really can't do that. Oh, well, we got Jeb back. Now the next thing I'm going to do before I send my mission to Thalia, I'm going to send an automated refueling tug to the space station. With an antenna attached to it. Just for shits and giggles.